Ever feel like you're invisible in your own family? That's been my reality for as long as I can remember. My parents always prioritized my younger brother over me, to the point of missing my major life events for his trivial activities. So, when my wedding day approached, I decided not to insist they attend after they dismissed my plans for yet another of his events. Now, after the wedding has passed and they found out through social media, my family is in turmoil. My parents are furious, my relatives are divided, and my brother is as smug as ever. Am I the asshole for not telling my parents the event they were missing was my wedding? Here's my story. I have a younger brother named Mike 21M, and I'm 27 years old. He fits the definition of a man-child and a mama's boy, always complaining and expecting others to cater to him. Simply put, he's an unpleasant person. Ever since he was born, my parents doted on him for everything. There's nothing special about him that requires such treatment. My mom, 50F, in particular went from being a loving mother to one of those mothers who overly favors their sons, which is often mocked on the internet. My father, 50M still showed me love and support but he never stood up to my mother and allowed me to win at least once. The only person who stood up for me was my grandpa, 76M, who never liked my brother and always called out my parents' behavior. My grandpa and I have a unique bond, but he lives on the other side of the country, making it difficult for us to see each other often. Mike is aware that our mom favors him and he loves to rub it in my face. Due to his behavior and my mother's preferential treatment, we've always been in conflict. He's spoiled, bratty, and just not a good person. I've lost count of how many times I've gotten into trouble for things I didn't do or for things he falsely accused me of. The only thing he's good at is playing football. He even earned a scholarship to a good college out of state. Meanwhile, my parents didn't contribute a cent to my education because they claimed my fund had been used to cover expenses after a fire. It wasn't until years later that I found out said money was actually given to Mike to buy a car and a house. It was at the public university that I met Lucas. He was the first person I was really drawn to there. Of course I met new people who are now my dearest friends and thanks to them and Lucas who was my best friend for years before we got together, I managed to move out of my parents' house. Now, both Lucas and I are well known in our fields and have very good salaries. Now, to the main issue. Lucas proposed to me a year ago. We're very private people, so we didn't post it on social media or anything, and when I told my parents, they dismissed it with a that's nice, I'm starting to think they downright didn't listen to me at all. We decided that we wanted a nice but simple ceremony and reception with our friends and relatives. Lucas convinced me to invite my parents and brother, but they never responded to the invite. Whenever I went to visit and began to talk about my wedding, without mentioning it was a wedding, my mom would always speak over me and about my brother's accomplishments and wild adventures. At one point I got fed up with it and interrupted my mom to tell her that there was an event I was planning to organize, whose date was unmovable. She told me that they couldn't attend because my brother was playing the last game of the season that very same day and wanted them to be there. Of course, this favoritism didn't surprise me. They missed my ballet shows and both my high school and university graduations because of things about him. At this point, I wanted to be petty. I told both my parents that it wasn't a problem to miss this event, purposely omitted the fact that this event was my wedding, and didn't insist further. Flash forward to a few weeks ago, I got married. It was perfect. My family, Lucas' family and our friends were all there, and we had a blast. My grandpa was happy to give me away and it was just perfect. My relatives asked me multiple times why my parents weren't there with us. I was honest and simply said they had my brother's game to attend and couldn't come. They gave me a few looks, and my grandpa was visibly angry for a while, but otherwise, nothing strange happened. After the reception, Lucas and I left for a honeymoon, and were phone free for the whole duration of the trip. But once we got back, we discovered that a shitstorm was welcoming us home. I turned my phone on, and was unable to even unlock it before a storm of notifications popped up. Most of them were from my mother and brother. Mike called me all sorts of nasty names and insulted me because apparently, one of my paternal aunts posted the photos of the wedding on Facebook and captioned it with a very obvious dig at my parents, especially my mom, for missing the wedding. The post apparently went viral in my parents' community, and they've been publicly shamed for their mistreatment of me. It also turns out that my grandpa personally visited my parents to go on a tirade to shame my father his son to the point of tears. 
This seemed to be my father's breaking point because he was so distraught for missing his only daughter's wedding and for his father's disapproval that he finally rebelled against my mom and threatened divorce, unless she made it up to me. I think that's the reason why my mom has been spamming my phone with messages, at first insulting and threatening, and then downright pitiful, full of begging and pity parties. Now, I'm at home with my husband, deciding how to approach the situation. Most of my relatives, even those I didn't invite to the wedding, reached out to apologize for what I went through and to claim they had no idea this was happening at home. I can't blame any of my relatives. They all live with my grandpa on the other side of the country or in another state. But my mom's sisters and friends are belittling me for not telling my mom about the wedding because now, she's inconsolable at the thought of having missed my wedding. Personally, I think she just claims that it is to save face, but I'm not sure. The latest messages from my father and mother seem extremely saddened and hurt for missing my wedding. Now, my family is divided on three fronts. The majority who is sticking by my side, my maternal aunts shaming me for hurting my mom's feelings, and my maternal grandparents who are adamant that I forgive my mom in light of her atonement. My best friends are telling me not to listen to them. So, Reddit, Ate. TLDR, since some of you guys want the juice without reading the post, my parents have preferred my younger brother over me my entire life and prioritized his events over mine. I got engaged and told everyone but was dismissed. I sent a wedding invitation to my parents and double-checked, but they didn't respond. When I told them the date, they told me my brother had a game they had to attend. I didn't repeat that it was my wedding during the exchange and told them that they weren't missing anything. I had my wedding, and now my parents are receiving backlash from my relatives and community after my aunt posted a dig at my mother. Edit. Thank you so much for the feedback. Love. It's overwhelming. I'm going to address the popular questions here. I did inform my parents about my wedding. I sent traditional on paper invites to all my guests. I was notified that all invites had reached their addresses. I did not receive any answer from my parents and Mike, a few very distant relatives, and some people on Lucas' side. I did reach out to all of them, through a message to double check, and those who hadn't replied told me they couldn't come. I asked my parents and brother via text, but they didn't respond. I was left on read. Knowing them, and given all the things I had to plan, I didn't bother insisting. I didn't remember the date of my wedding because I had already been told there was my brother's game. Plus. Every time I insisted on highlighting my celebrations to get an answer, I was always told that it wasn't that important and to not be pissy and a bother. Because some things were simply more important than me. At this point I think it's fair for me not to insist anymore. It's not worth the effort. I didn't keep my wedding a secret. I avoided telling my parents that it was my wedding to see if they would be interested in the slightest, but surprise, surprise they weren't. Despite this, I did openly talk about my wedding with my aunts and uncles. My mother was in the room with us a few times when I discussed venues or dress shops with my aunt, the FB post one, but sometimes mom was on the phone, and other times she was just chatting with other people. She never paid attention. When I talked about it during reunions, she smiled and said, that's great dear, and then would change the subject. Radio silence on dad and Mike. I kept in contact with them because, well, all the times I tried to go to NC in the past years, I've been harassed. I tried after my HS, bachelor's and master's graduations, to which they never bothered to show up for reasons involving my brother. Every time I was shamed for daring to turn my back on my family by my parents, my brother, my maternal aunts, and my maternal grandparents. I think the turning point here is that, in all those times, Lucas wasn't by my side, we started dating a little after my last attempt at going NC, and now that I have him here. I feel more confident in my stains. But before that, I want this confidence. As I already stated, my paternal side lived on the other side of the country. And I wasn't aware of how they treated me. I did try to expose my parents once at 14. My aunts, uncles and grandpa reprimanded them. They faked being sorry. And then once home, I got the beating and gaslighting of my life for lying. After that, I kept in contact regularly with my paternal side, but omitted my parents' abuse out of fear which TBH still haunts me to this day. Only Grandpa knew, but he was always threatened to be alienated from me if he tried anything. My parents and I are not from the same city. I live in a city an hour's drive from my parents' small town, and they don't know my new address because once, my brother tried to break into my apartment to steal some cash, 
and my mother backed him up, claiming that siblings share their goods. Now I move, and I'll be sure not to tell them where I live. My parents didn't buy my brother a car and a house before he even started high school. They bought him a car for his 16th birthday and a house near his college when he began freshman year. They didn't spend the money for my fund right away, they just lied to me to use it later for my brother, keeping it stored for later in the meantime. Things have been a little crazy this past week. I got off of Reddit for a couple of days to gather my thoughts. Then, I had a lengthy conversation with Lucas about how to proceed. He's been my rock, and I don't think I could ever love him more than I already do. My parents were always a taboo topic, but he hit me with a brutal reality check that I absolutely needed. We reached the conclusion that the fact I kept in contact all this time, stuck around, and couldn't go to NC wasn't healthy. I've realized that the reason I never fully went to NC, was that deep down, I just wanted their approval, even now for once. Pathetic I know. But it's like a drug, being with my parents. They can be loving, funny, caring, and warm until they're not. The little love they give makes you crave for more and you want their approval so badly you destroy yourself. But that's enough. I promised myself that things were going to change. I thought about it and decided to start therapy and to go and see, with all those who made an issue about this situation, for good this time. After the days dedicated to reflecting on how I felt, I ended up messaging my father to tell him that if he wanted to talk, I would meet him, mom, and Mike in a neutral location the following day. He immediately replied and agreed, and we met at the park. My father's sisters and brother accompanied us for damage control. My father looked distraught, as if he had been crying for a while. My mom looked the same, but I think it was more out of anger and embarrassment. My brother looked annoyed. I told the three of them about how their behavior and preference in regard to my brother always hurt me, and that their abusive behavior made me realize that I didn't want contact with any of them again after that meeting. My mother tried to cut me off multiple times, but my aunt, the one who posted on FB, shut her up every single time. When I asked them why they would treat me this way, they didn't know what to say. My father kept crying and apologizing without giving me an answer, and my uncle reprimanded him for it. My mother seemed as if she was asking herself that for the first time, but well, in the end, she just said that she simply disliked me. Plain and simple. And my brother? He just liked the attention and making me miserable as some kind of sport. I went on with my questions. When I asked why they never responded to my invite, they claimed to have never received one. I showed them the texts, but they denied receiving them. And well, it turns out that they hadn't in fact, received my wedding invitation. When they arrived at their house they weren't there. The only one in the house was my brother, who had come to visit for the weekend. He saw the invite, and as many of you guessed, ripped it up and trashed it. And then, when I texted my parents, he deleted the messages, it wasn't hard to do, according to him, they kept my chat archived and didn't get the notification. So, my parents never actually got a formal invitation. I was just distraught. I asked Mike why he would do that, and he just shrugged and claimed that it wasn't as important as the stuff they had in the program anyway. I had to stop Lucas from punching him in the face. Strangely enough, my parents were upset and started reprimanding him. He actually began to throw a tantrum and cry crocodile tears, and I must admit that I was kind of satisfied. But then my mom claimed that all was resolved, there was no need to fuss over a misunderstanding, and it was time for me to clear their name. That set me off, and I interrupted her, telling her that they weren't forgiven at all, that just because Mike trashed the invite, it didn't mean it automatically cancelled all their neglect. Plus all that time, it was still very obvious that I was having a wedding, and they should have asked about it. Do you want to know my mother's response? She said something along the lines of, I did hear you talking about a wedding of yours, but I just thought you were being delusional and seeking my attention with exaggerated scenarios. She was convinced Lucas didn't actually like me, nor would ever marry me. When I tell you I was about to trash your face, do you believe me? Another thing came up. It turns out that my brother didn't have a football game to go to at all. My parents used the fact that my husband, friends, and I know little to nothing about football, we prefer soccer, and the fact I stopped asking about it when Mike would mock me during his time in high school to make up a story to avoid my event. At the time I wrote the OG post, I couldn't confirm or deny the presence of a game because my brother has private social media, Lucas and I are blocked, and I foolishly trusted my parents' word. But no. You want to know where they went with that man-child? They went to Disneyland because Mike wanted to go. 
they used the football story to cover for my brother's 100th tantrum holiday. And apparently, they did it multiple times in the past months. At that point, I was just completely burnt out and overwhelmed by this amount of information. The fact that I had been fooled this badly, that I was so gullible, genuinely made my blood boil, and I snapped. I stood up and told my father he was a sad, weak man, unable to stand up for his kids, unless his wife approved of it. I told my brother he was a little dipshit, a poor excuse of a man that will not accomplish anything in his life, and they'll always live like the leech he is, baby, to the point of uselessness. And to my mom, I just I told her that she was the worst narcissist, pathetic little woman on the earth, that she didn't even deserve to be addressed and judged for her irrelevance. Not even God could help her out because she was just too rotten. Harsh, I know. My mother shot up from her seat to scream at me halfway through my rant to her, but I was just too mad. I shouted at her to shut the fuck up and sit down and listen for once. She got so mad it felt like steam was coming out of her ears. I don't remember much after that, I just kept talking. And talking. It felt as if all my anger and hurt just flooded out. At one point I'm pretty sure the whole park was silent. I spat at my parents and Mike, saying that I was disowning them all, and that if they're smart, they'll think before reaching out again. I took my purse and left with Lucas, Anna and Francis, leaving my parents and brother at my aunt and uncle's mercy. I think at some point, the reality of what I just learned and said finally hit me, because I ended up having a panic attack on the way home. Lucas was driving, so Anna helped me through it until we stopped in a parking lot to calm me down. I am beyond grateful for their help. Once home, I just fell on the bed and went to sleep. I really wanted to go with your guy's advice and post the whole thread on FB, but given my work and career, I couldn't expose myself like that. One thing is sharing my story from an anonymous throwaway on Reddit. The other is on FB, with my name and face plastered everywhere. I couldn't go down that path. Instead, I did something better. I made a folder with all of my mother's insults, messages, and awful comments, and sent it to the woman in charge of my mom's church. It's a tight-knit community my mom worked her ass off to enter in, but that is also extremely judgmental and being shunned by them is a death sentence. And well, that's exactly what happened. Just like clockwork, the scandal spread like wildfire, going out of the church and reaching the rest of the small town. You can imagine what this means for my mother and father. Because of my little spill, I did find other messages from my maternal side of the family, belittling me even more for upsetting their sister or daughter and insulting her. I just didn't care anymore at that point, so I followed you guys' advice and told them that from now on, it will no longer be part of my life and that they can talk shit all they want, I just won't care. Instead, they should be grateful I don't send their nasty texts to their employers and spouses. I block every single one of them, grandparents included, on everything. I did find a lengthy message from my father. He apologized for not being strong enough to face my mother, agreed that what I said was true, and couldn't believe that he had lost so much of my life because of her. He told me he was going to divorce her, no matter what my decision would be because he was tired of being controlled. He would like a relationship with me to make up for all the years that passed. I did reply to him to tell him that, as of now, I really don't want to see him or forgive him. He replied that he tries best to win me back, and that he loved me, I replied back that, as of now, I find it hard to believe, and then blocked him too. Frankly, his slimy way of trying to get out of this situation by throwing my mother under the bus is pathetic. At least she was hateful, and owned up to it. He is only able to blame others for his choices. I don't want to surround myself with people like that. My mother and brother are blocked similarly to my maternal side. Mike wrote other messages to taunt and insult me, and I just blocked him. My mom threw herself a pity party for being shunned by her community and for her marriage going into shambles, and I just replied, good riddance before blocking her too. As for my grandpa, he has decided to stay with us for a while and stick by my side. He really is the best and has read some of your comments, he isn't going to admit that he's flattered by them. Since then, a few days have passed, and all has been quiet. Lucas is spoiling me rotten, and I'm starting therapy soon. I know this isn't the drama-filled, revengeful update you hoped for, but well, this is it. I'll let you know if anything changes or evolves. Thank you so much for the love and support you showed me, I think I'm going to log out now. As for now, goodbye. TLDR, I've decided to start therapy. I confronted my parents and brother about their behavior, and ended up disowning them. 
I sent my mother's nasty messages to the leader of her church, and now she and her husband are shunned by their community.